Thank you very much. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, contrary to what's in the program book, this is not Peter Grunwald. Uh, as you can see, it says uh, Richard Gill. He's going to talk about statistics and the law, um, mathematics and the law. Uh, the, both of them have been involved in a rather, um, 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 well, rather well-known, and I, I can't say famous, more like an infamous case in the Netherlands whereby a nurse was uh, being sued for killing off people on the basis of statistics. And he's one of the people who helped to sort of undo the work of the previous courts so that the case is by now finally being under review again, uh, for which she at least is very grateful, and I yes. think quite a number of other people. Um, prepare yourself for stati statistics and the law. Enjoy. Okay. <laughs> yep, thank you very much. So, uh, indeed, I, I'm Richard Gill and not Peter Grunewald. Peter Grunewald is a good friend of mine, and we did a lot of work together on this case. And does this work? Doesn't work. We just, well, he couldn't be here, so I threw, uh, threw in for him. Uh, these are some logos of some of my sponsors, sponsors, which I won't say too much about. Uh, if there's one thing I'd like you to remember is you may have heard a saying, lies, damned lies, and something or other. Forget it. Spread this one around. I'd like everybody to, when they hear about lies and damned lies, to think about legal truths. Uh, actually, so this is a, I want to tell you about a, an infamous case in the Netherlands, which as you have seen is a wonderful, progressive, kind, friendly, sunny, lovely country, but it has some strange uh, streets in it, and one of the strange things is that even in the most uh, modern uh, society, of, in modern Europe, one can have an old-fashioned witch hunt and a witch trial, uh, and like everything happens short of uh, burning her on a fire. That, uh, that it's what they would have done uh, uh, 200 years ago. Uh, actually, I don't want to con talk too much about the mathematics or the statistics, so if there are people who are here especially to hear lots of math and statistics, I'm sorry, I'm going to disappoint you, because I was thinking what is really interesting about this case, I think, perhaps for a, a community of hackers or whatever, who I think of as being somewhat like a community of scientists, is actually like, uh, what happened in this case was at some point, uh, let me show you an alternative uh, title, if I can find the right button, maybe this one. This is another uh, title I often give to my talk, Science versus Justice, and it's a strange thing that both uh, science and justice are both looking after, the, are searching for the truth. Are you trying to find out what is the truth, or describe the truth, or get as close as possible to the truth? Scientists do that, and justice tries to do that too. That's what our system, justice system is all about. Uh, but actually one sees, sees in this case two communities pitted against one another at some point. The scientific community, which I think of as being like the hackers community, where you value uh, creativity and freedom and thinking out things for yourself and individual responsibility. And on the other hand, you have, well, the justice establishment, which is uh, a community uh, a very big and powerful community in modern, modern societies which lives by rules. It's, they are bureaucrats. They do not think creatively. Well, sometimes they, think, they do think creatively. You'll see in my story that uh, uh, we, the scientists, actually forced them, the lawyers, to be very creative because they kind of trapped themselves in their own laws. Uh, this woman was thrown into jail and there was absolutely, absolutely no way she could be taken out of jail again according to the law, even if everybody could see she was innocent. So actually the lawyers had to be, do some creative thinking to figure out a way to still follow their rules and let her out. I'll explain that. Uh, well, I think there's another little uh, preliminary thing I just wanted to mention. Uh, somebody... Uh, emailed me this uh, quote uh, two days ago. Uh, I thought it somehow re it's an, a nice way to represent indeed a bureaucratic system, a big establishment, a big you know, them, the system. Systems uh, evolve in order to, to stay existing for a long, long time. And they do that by forming rules and then everybody inside the system acts by the rules and then everything is okay. And uh, the systems see themselves as being per, per, mm, perfect. 
that the Dutch legal system sees itself as perhaps the most perfect legal system on earth. P perhaps it is. It's not that bad, actually. But uh, it's, it, it, it thinks of itself as being perfect. And actually, uh, I don't know how many Dutch people are here, but they probably will also be very, would typically feel that they must have the best legal system in the world. Uh, and it must be perfect because this is such a wonderful country and we organize things here so beautifully. So uh, if your system is perfect, then mistakes cannot happen. So you don't have to take account of them. So you don't uh, ever have any mistakes because you don't recognize them because they don't exist. So you can never learn from your mistakes and so you stay stuck and system evolves into a dead end like dinosaurs or something like that. It, it becomes blind to its environment because it knows so well about itself that it's perfect and infallible. And it's written in the law that the final word of the final Dutch judges is the legal ultimate final truth from the legal point of view. Which, and the legal point of view is the point of view uh, which has the state, the power of the state behind it. Okay, let's see what happens next. Uh, okay, so uh, there are two points of view to this story. And if I would be telling this story uh, five years ago or six years ago, um, it would be very controversial and most people would actually uh, think of this point of view. This is a newspaper's, a journalist's, newspaper artist's drawing of this woman, this nurse, in court. She's looking rather haggard and a bit witch-like. We never saw a picture of her. We, only, we never knew her surname. We only knew her first name, Lucia de, de B, actually Bert. Um, we heard a lot of strange stories about her in the newspaper. For instance, she'd been a prostitute. Uh, that was a very, very shocking thing in this modern liberal country, that a nurse should formally have been a prostitute was definitely not a good thing. Uh, uh, this is what she looked like when I visited her a month or two ago. Uh, it's not a very good picture. It's taken with my iPhone. Recently, watching uh, Kill Bill 2, I think she looks very much like Uma Thurman. And actually, she is a very, very tough woman, a very uh, gorgeous woman in the way that Uma Thurman is a gorgeous woman, but a powerful woman, very powerful woman. And powerful woman, women are threats to men, of course, and this is why witches have always been burnt. Well, uh, some people will still think that she's a wicked witch who killed loads of babies and old people about 10 years ago, eight years ago. And um, nowadays, most people think that she is a kind of a victim of uh, bad luck and a not perfect system. I have some more pictures here at the beginning. Some uh, people involved in this case. Uh, uh, people said to me when, at the beginning, when, uh, well, I only got involved in this about two or three years ago, and it all started about eight years ago. So I'm a latecomer to this game. Peter Grunwald was before me, and he actually was the one who pulled me in two or three years ago. Um, at that t time, when it was still, when the total Dutch opinion, also of educated, reasonable, intelligent, even hackers, nice people, and intelligent people uh, was the woman must have been a witch. Of course, uh, uh, legal systems aren't perfect. Perhaps uh, they didn't have, hadn't actually proved that she'd actually killed 10 people, but perhaps she'd, uh, they'd only proved that she'd killed five, but probably she'd killed 20 or 30 anyway, so who cares? Uh, and it was finished. It was all finished and done with and, and forgotten. Uh, uh, and some people said to me, how can you stand up and say that you know better than 17 judges? Because her case went from a lower court to a higher court to the Supreme